Hank the Hammer Goldberg. How are you, Hank? Rich, I'm really good. It's a big weekend for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope the weather uh, clears there so okay. that we have a real race. Okay, Hank, let's get right into it. First of all, how are you doing? Everything good with you? Life's I'm good? good. Fantastic. Fine. Love here. I moved that. to Las Vegas, and I'm enjoying life here. Ve you're in, I didn't know that, Hank. You're not in South Florida anymore? No, I'm much closer to you. Okay. Do you run in a Musburger every now and then? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I don't know if there was a history or anything like that, Hank. That sounded like I might have touched the third rail right there. Everything good? Yeah. <laughs> I, I run into a lot of the uh, sports book directors here and hang out with a lot of those guys. Fantastic. I'm working. Uh, I'm working for a couple of different networks and back with the mother network now as their uh, horse racing analyst. I love it, Hank. It's just the greatest thing ever. And so, so you have no idea how many people were reaching out to us saying, when are you going to have the hammer on? Are you going to have Hank on? And I'm like, okay, we got to do it. And I'm so glad that you are free to do it. And um, let's get to the it. What do you think is going to happen on Saturday at Churchill Downs? You have the floor, sir. Well, a couple of months ago, I was talking to Bill Mott, who trains Tacitus the eight horse. And, uh, he told me that of the, he had a bunch of derby prospects that this was the best because he was bred to run the mile and a quarter and he was going to train him up to this race. This was right before he, he won the Tampa Bay Derby. And he said, the longer they go, the better he runs. Well, in the wood, he got slammed coming out of the gate and went to his knees and he passed 11 horses and won the race going away. Mm, mm, mm. And I thought that race really helped him because he ran against 11 horses and passed them all. So he has that experience, and he's a horse that comes from off the pace. And Bill's very high on him, and I certainly trust Bill Bond. The other horse I like is Improbable, number five. He drew great. Now, he freaked out in the gate in the Arkansas Derby. And I uh, ran second to Omaha Beach. They almost scratched him because they put blinkers on him. And he went nuts in the gate. And, uh, but he ran, and he almost uh, caught uh, Omaha Beach, who was going to be the favorite in this race before he scratched. This horse is doing very well. I talked to uh, his uh, people from Windstar, Elliot Walden, who runs that. And Elliot said, this horse, uh, don't pay any attention. Anybody says this horse isn't bred to go the distance. Uh, his sire has sired many horses who can run anywhere from five eighths to the derby distance. And I think he drew a great post, post five. He'll have a shorter run mm -hmm. than uh, a lot of the other horses that people like here. And and I think that uh, I think he's going to get a perfect trip from the five post. And I think he's got a great shot to win this race. So those are my two top horses. Um you know, the other Baffert horse, by the way, yes. uh, Baffert, this is a Baffert horse, uh, improbable. Uh, the other uh, it's game winner the other and Baffert roadster. Horse, yeah. Game winner. He's the favorite. He was number 16. I didn't like his post. You know, he has a tendency. He, his last couple of races, he's been wide, and he drifts in the stretch. And he, if, if he had been in post 16, that would have bothered me. Now... With the scratches, he's out of the 14 hole, which isn't as bad, but he's still wide. And uh, I think you have to use him in your exotics because he could be the best horse. Uh, he's, he's really loaded with talent. When you, when you say, got, before, uh, before you go yeah. on there, Hank, when you say exotics, what does that mean for some folks who might not know what you mean, that they've got to be in your exotics? The exactus, exactus, trifectus, got it. superfectus, where you can make a lot of money. Sure. Instead of just betting one horse. Got it. Okay. So what? And, uh, keep going, I then, sir. A couple of other horses underneath. Code of Honor, Sug McGahee's horse, ran a closing third in the Florida Derby against a lone speed horse who had an easy trip, and you know, that was maximum security. Who won't have an easy trip in the Kentucky Derby because he's uh, right next to Vacoma, who will probably run with him early. And so uh, Code of Honor will be closing. And the Wise Guy horse is uh, the three horse, um, who is, uh, you know, he's uh, he, he's a winner of the uh, race in Louisiana, the 
uh, the Derby there. What do you mean by uh, wise guy? You're talking about by my standards, yeah, all, the three oars. All, all, all the rumors okay. uh, about who's doing well, and if you want a real long shot to throw in there, okay, this is a horse that could hit the board. Okay, then. I don't like him to win, but I think he's going to move out with the five horse early. He has a similar stalking style, and uh, the horse is called By My Standards. And uh, and that's what. So I'm going to box the five and the eight. Okay. With the thirteen, the sixteen, mm-hmm. and the three in exactas, and I'll I'll play a super with the eight on top. Okay. Of the of, of the other four, and I'll use a super with the five on top of the, of the four that I like. So uh, you're and hopefully you make a score. Okay, there you go. So you're boxing the five and the eight, and then. Uh, if you want to add a third right there, it's either 13, 16, and 3, and you do all three of them. And then the super is 8, 5, 13, 16, 3, or 5, 8, 13, 16, 3. That's the way you're going right here. Right. And you know what? You, you've got to use the 16. He's a very good horse. But he's uh, he's been wide his last two trips and ran second. And uh, and if he runs wide here, uh, you know, he, you don't want to add any extra distance when you're going a mile and a quarter. And that's where I, what I think could hurt him. But you have to, you have to use him in your exacta boxes. So uh, Hank Goldberg here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. The scratching of Omaha Beach changed this race. How? Well, um, he was a favorite. If it is a, it's a wet track, he loves the off going. Uh, he would uh, he would have had a difficult time getting in a position to get the early lead because there were the two speed horses I mentioned inside. And a lot of stalking pace, and uh, he might not have had an easy time getting the lead. And I was going to use him in my exacta boxes, but I uh, not on top. Uh, I thought he could be beaten. I, you know, he's benefited uh, in his last couple of races uh, by, uh, you know, the, uh, the off track. He loved the slop in Arkansas, and the fact that Mike Smith chose him over Roadster, and that's when the odds dropped on him. Yeah, I'm looking at the weather right now for Saturday, Hank. It's a high probability of rain coming, 70%. It's going to be a lot of ruined hats. Yeah. A lot of ruined hats. But if it rains day. early, right? the uh, the track uh, uh, gets pretty dry in a hurry. Okay. And But the one thing is about the racing there today and tomorrow is if it's, if it's sloppy and the uh, turf course – is uh, is yielding at all? Yes. The rail is not where you want to be. You want to be outside. Okay, so then that would help game winner. It would. Right. Okay. All right. So let's let's sum up here, uh, Hank Goldberg. You like for somebody who just wants to box something. You like the five and the eight horse. Uh, yep. And then if somebody has the one shot at boxing a trifecta out of the thirteen, sixteen, and three to throw in there, which one would you suggest? Probably the 16. So then you want game winner. So the 5, 8, 16 is your trifecta of choice. And then, again, the superfecta would just be some combination of all five, certainly with the 8 and 5 on top or the 5 and 8 on top of the 13, 16, and 3. That's the way you're rolling. Yeah. Going into I'm going to use exactas with the, with the 3 and the 13. Okay. And the 5 and the 8. Okay. I like it. All right. Um, where are you going to watch the race? Want to give a shout-out to where you're going to watch it? I'm going to be at uh, Sunset Station to watch the early races, but I have to be home because uh, the network I work for wants me on before the race, Hank. and they want to bring me on afterwards. Hank, this is awesome. And that, that's where my uh, Skype setup is. Okay. So I have to be home to watch the race. All right. There you go. Um, all right. Do you have any other questions, Chris? Have I, have I covered everything with Hank, do you think? No, we're locked and loaded. Let's do this, Hank. Okay, let's do this thing. We're going to do this, Hank. Um, anything else I should know? What's going on? Uh, well, uh, I, I like uh, the uh, 14 horse in the Oaks today. Okay. Because there's a lot of speed there. Nice bonus. And uh, and I think this horse, will, the name of the horse is Restless Rider, and I think uh, she's the one closer that I like in the race. Okay. And, so. and uh, you know, we haven't seen, the only time we've ever seen back-to-back Triple Crown winners is, of course, of Seattle Slough and Affirmed, 77 and 78. If you had to name one horse that has the best chance to to do that, it would be game winner, would you say? No, it would be Tacitus. Okay. 
because if he wins this race, he's going to be perfectly, as as Mott told me, the, the longer they go, the better he runs. How about that? So, uh, you know, I like him a lot in this race, and and uh, and I think he'd be a big threat in the Belmont because of his running style and his ability to go the distance. He has great breeding. Well, Hank, Susie says sends her best to you too because I uh, I got your. Oh, your... all the best. She All the best to her. She's, she's, she's terrific. I agree. You and I are lockstep there, too. Hank, <laughs> we'll chat with you before the Preakness, okay? We'll chat again. Okay. Tell her the reason I haven't sent her any stone cribs is because I'm in Las Vegas now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just come to see you. We'll just have dinner at some point. We'll do that. That would be wonderful. I agree. Uh, I get a lot. I get a lot of comps here, Rich. So it's not a bad deal. Look, I love the, Hank. The way you roll, I am sure you get a lot of comps. Walk. Did you? <laughs> do you ever see Sinatra there in Vegas? Do you ever see a Sinatra show? Oh, yeah. Which one? I did. Which one? Do you remember? Uh, well, I saw him. At, I saw him at Caesars uh, years ago. I saw him more than once, uh, and I used to see him at the Fountain Blue at, in Miami I'm, Beach. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. When he worked there. Well, they have the, that's the, some of the most famous photographs of him strolling around the pool there with a uh, with all of his uh, compatriots. Some of my favorite. Well, Sinatra I'll tell you photos. who I watch the races with. Is Shecky Green, who's over ninety and still mentally sharp, and uh, he meets me at the race book, and uh, he's got some great Sinatra stories. I bet. I once saw him with my parents in the Catskills, Hank. Oh, that's a fact. That is a fact. And also at the Friars Club, I once saw him personally. Oh yeah. True story. Funny man. Yeah, no doubt. Hank, we'll chat before the Preakness. We'll chat soon. For sure. It's great to talk with you. Thank you. Got it right back at you. That's the hammer right there. Hank Goldberg. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.